Hi! When stringing a racket, there are situations that require the use of an awl. In this video, I'll share some applications in six situations. All right, here's what it's all about. All right, so I have a collection of awls here, and these are all straight awls, but um, as you can see, it comes in different shapes and different tip sizes. On my left here, I have these are badminton awls. In the middle, these are more for tennis. And on this, uh, on my right here is uh, a special awl that I use. So I'll explain the um, applications as I talk about each situation. And I'll start with uh, number one, which is uh, probing inside of a hole to check for grommet damage. I, I like to use the badminton awl for that uh, because it's a little bit more sensitive and you really can feel what's inside the grommet. Um, so I would use this if I really want to uh, make sure I can feel what's in there. And uh, so I'll take this one and typically when you check the grommets, you want to check the uh, last two or three mains on the top, on the head and at the, um, the throat area. So what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to run the tip through the grommet hole and feel if there's any rough uh, edges, uh, mainly to feel if that edge um, the rough edge is the frame sticking uh, through the grommet. <clears throat> and if that's the case, then you know that you have to either uh, tube it or um, replace the grommet. So I will be checking the top and the bottom. And sometimes the damage could be on a cross too, so you wanna look for that. Uh, but sometimes it's flared out and it might not necessarily be damaged. It's just that it's flared because of the fact that it's uh, usually a tie off hole. So, uh, so far I'm checking all of these, it's, it's good. And um, I have one here though that I checked earlier and I know it, this one is damaged right here. So what I'm feeling is that there's a slight rough edge and what it is is actually it's the graphite that's coming through the grommet. So I have a picture here where you can see that there is a hole in it. So that would be an area that I would uh, focus on using tubing or um, again you can replace the grommets if the uh, if it's really bad um, and if the bumper is worn so that would be a good time to change it up all right so um, that would be um, the first situation that you can use a badminton awl to check inside of a grommet all right so next we have a situation where you want to create a tie-off on a cross string and this is useful when you're running a hybrid setup and you have the polyester on the crosses where you wanna tie off on the polyester instead of on the main, which is um, in this case a synthetic or it could be natural gut. So the all that you would use for that is something that has a nice tapered tip. So these three right here have that uh, nice taper to it. Something like this all here wouldn't work because the tip uh, it's not very tapered, it just has a tip and it just uh, is, is very thick right here. So um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Babolat uh, awl that I typically use. And what you want to do is locate the hole. And uh, in this case, um, it cannot be this this first cross because that's where, uh, you, that's the string that you'll be tying off on. Uh, the second one here is really close to this main string. So I'm going to have to go down to the third uh, cross string from the top. So what I'm going to do is um, I have some chapstick here that's to lubricate the tip. And I'm just going to stick it in there and just coat the tip with it. And again, I'm selecting that third hole. So I'm just going to go in there. And basically, you're just going to... Um, I'm gonna lock my turntable. But you wanna be really careful too that when you're pushing it in, uh, you're not angling the awl because that could actually bend the tip. So I'm just gonna just try and get in there. Basically you're trying to enlarge the hole so that it's big enough for the cross to go in there and to tie off on onto that cross. Now you have to be careful that as this tip becomes closer to this uh, in this case, the eighth main, uh, not to stab it. So I'm just making sure that it's gonna bypass that string. So um, yeah, this is a very tight hole. So uh, I hope that I can enlarge it enough to fit two strings in there. So 
I'm just gonna let that sit set for a while because I wanna give it some time to uh, enlarge. All right, so I'm back. I let this sit for about five minutes. So what I'm gonna do is remove the awl and uh, I'll go ahead and weave this third cross. And after I weave this third cross, then I'll be able to uh, come back and tie off the, uh, the, the crosses right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and tension the second cross. And after I tension the third cross, then I'll be able to come back and then tie it off. Again, this is useful when you are trying to enlarge a hole, especially when you're in a using a hybrid setup and you want to tie off the poly on a poly string. So, all right. All right, so that's the third. Now I can come back here and I'm gonna go ahead and put the knot, knot function on. All right, so this is the hole right here and I did enlarge it, um, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna get it in just by pushing the string in. So just to be safe, I'm gonna get my chapstick again and just coat the tip of that um, string. And I already cut a nice angled tip to the uh, end of that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and push it in there. And um, yeah, there looks like there's a lot of space in there, so I'll be able to get it in. And the good thing is that polyester is stiff, so it's nice and easy to uh, like push it in there. So yeah, that went in pretty easily. Um, this is 17 gauge polyester, so that does help. If it was 16 gauge, uh, it would be a tough situation with the, uh, with the thickness of the string. Here's a third situation when you're trying to create an opening. And this could happen when you have a shared hole or a tie off that's really tight. So I'm gonna show you a couple examples here. So on this um, tie off hole, it's right here, it's on a cross and it's actually big enough for the string to go through. But um, I have a picture of my view as I'm looking through this hole. And let's say if it was really tight, what you wanna do is look in that hole and see if there's more space above, above the cross string or below. So. In this case, when I'm looking at it, I can see a little bit more space on the top. So what I would do is, uh, again, whenever you use the awl, you want to lubricate it. So I would put a little bit of chapstick on it. And what I'm going to do, and you have to be really careful with this. So again, I'm using my tapered awl. And I'm going to go ahead and clear an opening or create an opening above this cross string here. And so what I want to do is make sure I'm aiming the awl in an upwards direction and I don't want to go straight in. I definitely don't want to go down because there's less space. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go ahead and rotate my awl as I go in and try to get it to angle up. So you can see the tip right here starting to peek out. Now you're getting this tip right here close to my main string. So again, you got to really be careful not to poke that string. So right now, if I go any further, I actually will touch it. So I would try and get that string out of the way if possible. And so right now I'm bypassing that string. And I think I've created enough of an opening at this point. So what I would do is, um, I would actually lubricate the tip of the string if it's really tight, just to be safe. Uh, just a thin coat, so just take off the access there. But what I would do is just prepare the tip of the string. And in this case, I wanna have a stable uh, racket. So I'm gonna lock my turntable. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the awl and try to insert the string really quickly. And as I insert the string, I wanna go at an upwards angle. And um, again, this is polyester, so this is a little bit easier. If it was a softer string, it would be a little bit more difficult. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the awl 
And as it comes out, I'm gonna try and pop that string in there so you can see that went in there. But this is actually a pretty a big hole. Um, so I'll, I'll show you another situation here. And again, it, it um, you really gotta be careful because you, know, you can damage the string, the anchor string, by using an awl in this uh, application. But I'm gonna go into a hole that's not even a tie-off hole. So I'm gonna go to the one above it and I'm gonna look, I mean, in this case, I'm just trying to get the all in, but on the outside or on, on, um, on this side of the string. So, you, and again, you wanna make sure that if I can get the, the all so I can see the tip come out through the grommet barrel, then, then that should be enough to fit the string in there. And again, you have to use your judgment. If this is getting really tight, I would stop doing it and maybe find another hole. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. So you can see the tip of that uh, all right there. Um, I think that's enough to get that, enough of an opening to go ahead and get this in there. So again, I'll just lubricate the tip of the string. Just get my uh, string ready to go in and pull out the awl and insert the string at the same time. And even the amount of, um, we wanna do is just hold it, hold the end of the string so I have just enough to get that tip right through. So I'm rotating my awl, taking it out slowly. And as soon as I get it out, then I wanna slip that in there. So once I can get that tip to come through there, then I have enough to uh, grab onto and I can pull it through. So. So this is a couple of examples of how you can create an opening. Uh, and again, this is useful when you have to tie off a string and sometimes on a shared hole. Here's a quick tip if you're trying to put a string in a shared hole and it's very tight. So let's say that this yellow string is a string that's already in the hole. And what you wanna do for the uh, string you're trying to put in the hole is to cut a nice sharp tip. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that cut there so you have a nice angle on that tip so what you can do is go ahead and bend the string a little bit so if it's polyester it bends pretty easily uh, this is a synthetic string so it won't bend as much but what you're going to do is uh, i have the tip right here and what you want to do is bend it so it angles up towards the tip so it might be hard for you to see but i'll go ahead and bend it first and try to bring it up so you can see what i just did so there's gonna be a slight curve to the tip, but again, it's angled in a way that it's um, going up in the direction of the sharp point. So let's say if that hole that you're looking into has more space at the top of the string um, in that hole. So what you're gonna do is as you uh, push the string through with your pliers, you're, um, you're gonna go at an upwards angle because you wanna get that string to go in the largest space, but at the same time, you're using that curve to really make sure that that tip of the string hugs the um, top part of that hole. If it was on the bottom, then you would just reverse that tip so that the uh, curve is going to the bottom of that string, and that way you can get it to pass through. And you should always, um, lubricate the tip so that everything can slide in easily and then once you can get that tip to uh, appear past the grommet then it's easy to just pull out and um, get it through here's a pretty common situation it's when you're replacing grommets on a racket so what you're going to use the straight awl in this case is to help guide the the grommets into the frame so depending on the frame and the um actually the grommet, some are really stiff. So what you wanna do first is make it more pliable. And I'm gonna use my heat gun here to soften it up. I'm just gonna go back and forth uh, for about 10 seconds on each side. I did another video where I actually did a whole grommet strip and bumper and I'll leave the link to that video below. But once you get it nice and pliable, what you wanna do is center it on the frame. So what I'm gonna do is find the, the center hole. Sometimes there's a dot, so it's easy to find. Uh, but in this case, I don't see one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and look for the 
the hole on the side that it matches up to and and then I'll find the center that way so I have the center right there so again depending on the type of um, grommet or in this case bumper some are more difficult than others uh, as you know um, I also did a video on the Babolat grommets and that that's a really tough one to install but you can see that what I'm doing here is I'm using the awl on the outside and uh, just kind of guiding it through the holes. And if you can hear that popping sound, that means that the grommet went all the way through. And sometimes you can go from the inside and guide it through that way. And sometimes you do have to um, use this technique. And what you want to do is just locate the grommet and just uh, bring it uh, angle it so that it, it goes right through the hole that way. So I got this side in and they're all sticking out. So I'm just going to flip it over and do the other side. Now you have to be careful too when you're using the awl not to be too over aggressive because you are wiggling it back and forth. And if your awl is not very strong, it could result in a bent awl. And um, I have a picture here of one that I did bend a little bit. Um, another technique as you're trying to guide it through is you could use a table and as you um, uh, guide it from the inside, you can, uh, you can press down on the frame and uh, try to help it through that way too. So you're guiding it from the inside and then pressing it from the outside. Uh, you can also use your fingers too to do it that way. But um, so here it is, yeah. You got all the uh, the grommets to the frame using your straight awl as a guide. All right, so this next situation doesn't happen too often, but let's say if you have a racket that was previously strung and for some reason the bumper guard or grommet strip was taken off and you want to put it back in. And if you ever try doing it, it's difficult because you have holes that are on the outside mains that were uh, that have an angle to it and the tie-offs are flared out. So now you have um, those holes that will be difficult to reinsert into the frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this uh, bumper guard off. Uh, this racket was strung a couple of times, so it's not too bad, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, reshape the holes and uh, reinsert the, the bumper guard in this case. And again, usually when you're taking off the bumper guard, it's because you're going to replace it with a new one. But I've had a situation before where I assume I had the right part. I took off the bumper guard and then I realized I had the wrong uh, bumper guard set. So I had to go ahead and reinsert the uh, grommets until I could get that. Uh, so I could string the racket and then uh, order the grommet strip and then, um, uh, and then replace it when I got that. So I have the bumper guard that I just removed and I'll show you some of those flared holes. You can see that uh, those uh, grommet barrels, especially on the ends because that's where the uh, mains was uh, coming down at an angle. Uh, this one right here is a tie off. Uh, this hole right, right there. So that one's a little bit more flared than the others. But basically what I'm going to do to reshape this um, bumper guard is I'm going to use a heat gun and that's on the edge of the table and I'm going to use the awl by press, uh, inserting it from the outside of the bumper guard and I'm going to make sure that it doesn't get too close to the heat gun but you know it's a matter of uh, just when it gets too hot I'm just going to pull it away but basically I'm going to just use the uh, straight awl and I'm going to shape the reshape the grommet so that it becomes straight by using my pliers and just kind of press on it using the, the awl as a kind of like a mold, I guess. And um, I'll go until I can get all of these fairly straight and then that way I'll be able to reinsert it into the uh, frame again. All right, so here's the final product. Uh, again, I had to um, I had to pull it away from the heat gun at times because it was getting too hot, but I did use the low setting also because, uh, yeah, I wanted to make sure that I'm not going to overheat it. So I got most of these barrels to be fairly straight. So 
Um, if I need to adjust it as I'm putting it through the frame by uh, heating it up some more, then I will. But um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in, back into the uh, frame and we'll see if we can get this to fit right back in there. All right, so I went ahead and heated up this uh, bumper guard to make it more pliable. And so what I'm gonna do is reinsert it into the uh, frame. And again, I, um, if I run into problems, I may have to redo the holes. Uh, if it gets to a point where it's really hard, then I might have to, I might cut off the ends of the uh, grommet and make it a little bit shorter. Um, and then maybe tube it if I have to. All right, so I got the uh, center, I got it centered now. And I'm gonna work on one side and the middle is not going to be too difficult because those are not the ones that are angled. But when I get towards the outside, I really have to make sure I'm guiding it through. And again, not forcing it because once I force it, it's going to actually flare it out even more. So I'm getting to a part in the frame right here where it is slightly angled. So, okay, when you hear that popping sound, that's good. Um, yeah, so I'm right there. I'm getting to the tie off. Uh, all right, so let's take a look at this here. Yeah, I can see this is the tie off right here and it doesn't want to come in. It doesn't want to come into the hole because it's still flared out. So what I'm probably going to have to do is reshape down, but let me try and go back to this other side and get this side in. Cause if I can get one side in, I'll just leave it in. And then I'll just take off the other side while it's still in the frame. Then um, just rework that side. So it does take patience because, yeah, this is not the easiest way to install grommets. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up and then um, I'll get back to you. All right, so I completed installing this used bumper guard. And again, that um, I did have to reheat the, uh, the uh, tie-off hole and reshape it while it was still in the frame. So that took a little bit of effort, but uh, this is the one right here. It's this hole right, right there. But anyway, I, was, I managed to get it through. So hopefully you won't have to do this too often because it does take time and patience. So if it got to the point where I couldn't get, let's say that tie off through, then I might just trim off the edge and um, so that it's not flared and then um, just um, tube that hole if I have to. All right, so finally we have a situation where you wanna remove a tack from a butt cap. Now in the previous, um, situations i use my tennis straight all uh, for uh, the previous applications but i wouldn't recommend it for this because you can actually break the tip of your awl and you don't want to have that happen especially if you have a nice awl like this so um, and i did i have broken awls in the past so uh, you don't want to use your regular stringing awl for that but um, I have a couple of awls here. This is the one that I usually use for uh, this purpose. It's uh, made by Victor Sports. And if you know that name, you can guess how old this one is. So I know you can't buy this anymore, but what I like about this is that it has a nice tip, but it's thick, so um, it's very strong and it can remove a tack pretty easily. So I have one here that I'm gonna go ahead and pry up from the butt cap. And, and uh, it comes out pretty easily. So this is my go-to all for removing tacks. But I have another one here that's heavy duty and uh, it's made by Klein Sports. It's not your typical all, but if you take a look at that, I mean, it's really thick and it has a nice point so it can get under the tack and pry it up pretty easily. So this is a, uh, my special awl, if I really can't get a tack um, out of the butt cap using my other awl, but uh, it can get under there, uh, pry it up, 
and no problem it just comes out just like that so this is a special all for a special situation i hope the applications that i shared with you in the six situations was helpful thanks for watching happy stringing and let your strings play